Dr. Uh, Reddy, I want you to, you know, brief us. It has been a season of partnerships for you. You know, last several months we have been seeing you partner with, uh, partnering with Philips. Now it's with, you know, Sanofi. You uh, had tie up for the ECG. So, you know, do you think that, uh, you know, partnerships is the way forward? And why is it so significant in the case of diabetic care? I think uh, the word partnership in our collaboration, as in this case, is to be able to bring, that's the promise that we made in 1982, our vision statement was to be able to bring to our people what's available anywhere in the world. And we did it. But what we have done continuously was to give the clinical excellence. And you know, in, a, in, a, in every single discipline, uh, we have brought in the, the best possible outcomes. But that's one side. But what we are talking today is a different thing. India and the rest of the world is facing a huge pandemic of NCDs and diabetes is the, the worst of it. And this is where I think our collaboration with Sanofi, who already is a century old company, 100 years. In 100 years they've done so much, you know, seen and so much and developed and helped uh, better manage uh, diabetes. This is our thing is, what can we give for people a whole holistic approach uh, to, to, in this case, diabetes? Christopher, how do you see this partnership? You know, for a pharma company to partner with a hospital chain in a developing country, you know? I don't think it's, it's nothing to do with really a developing country. It was really finding um, someone who shared a, a similar vision about the need to, to do a better job of bringing all the elements of care together to get a better outcome for a patient. Uh, you know, the, the realization that we had is, is that we could come up with ever better new medicines, but a medicine alone is not going to be enough to help a diabetes patient. Um, there's education of the patient, there's education at the physician level, there's um, a whole series of interventions necessary from um, trying to have behavior modification. So what the patient eats, how much uh, activity the patient has. Um, there are consequences to type 2 diabetes, um, for example, in, in, in neuropathies. Um, and so the experience that we had seen in other studies is that when you take a proactive approach and manage the patient, instead of just having the patient go through a, a chain of of physicians and other interventions that you can actually get to a better approach. It's, diabetes is a very complicated disease for uh, patients to live with. And we were already doing some education work. We were already working in schools to help um, avoid some of the stigma. We were already encouraging screening and said, well, if we could do this together and we bring 100 years of diabetes research and knowledge um, with the clinical excellence of the, the uh, Apollo uh, system, then maybe we could do a better job and, and perhaps even find a model that could work uh, elsewhere in the world. Dr. Reddy, you know, the sugar clinics of Apollo has been there for some time, but what is it that new that you are going to add with this uh, you know, relationship? If, if, if there is an equity partnership, you should you'd say, say that if there is more than equity partnership, what is it that you are going to see? What change? That's good. What we had when we started two and a half years ago, when we started the sugar clinic, it's only with this purpose to see how can we do something for him in totality, in taking care of him. I think we succeeded to a very large extent on a small number of people. We are talking about a few thousand people whom we have treated in the last few years. I think that what gave us the, the tremendous uh, enthusiasm saying if we have this input that we can make a difference. People who have experienced that sugar clinic before tell me, you know, and Oman I walked in, one guy walked, walked up to me and he said, Dr. Reddy, you have a fabulous sugar clinic here. You know what, when I came here nine months ago, my A1C was 10.5. Yesterday my A1C was 7. I'm, I look five years younger. This is what we've been seeing. So this is where we felt that we should now spin off and allow this to to go and have this total holistic approach of uh, sugar clinics where you will see, I think evening you must come and see what all we have in this sugar clinic. It's not just the diabetologist. It's not somebody who gives a medicine a prescription for a medicine or a pharmacist who will deliver this medicine. There is a total care for him. And more importantly, 
advice for him as to how to manage his lifestyle and actually tell him, you know, if he does, he says, I don't know how to meditate. He can come on, log on to our app. He will, he'll be taught how to meditate, take a, do meditation 15 minutes a day, once or twice a day, which will make that difference because that stress has increased the sugar and the stress has caused his blood pressure and it caused cardiac problems or whatever. So I think it's a whole bunch which, uh, I don't know, I use the word, we are all shivering with what NCDC is going to do yeah. for the world and more importantly for the developing world and underdeveloped world. Look at the number of deaths they said, that 36 million people are going to die from NCDC every year. And then cost burden. What, what is that new one thing which Sanofi is bringing to the table? Is it more number of clinics? Or I is think it? Sanofi is bringing their 100 years of experience in education, in better management, and more importantly, willing to see whatever we, uh, we do in the research with you and elsewhere will bring that knowledge for betterment of people. Chris? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't just say a medicine exists um, in isolation. The medicine is, exists um, in, in terms of uh, how a, a physician does a diagnosis, does the patient take the medicine? Does the ta patient take the right dose of the medicine? And there are a lot of factors go into those aspects. And so as we think about what kind of new mechanisms of action should we be developing? What kind of new insulin pens should we be developing? What kind of education program should we be developing? How can we help physicians understand better? Uh, you know, one of the aspects of insulin is, is that if you get the wrong dose, you can have a risk of, of, of too little. Um, uh, glucose, which is hypoglycemia. And as a result, some physicians are, are reluctant to use that. How do we actually help them to understand the risk benefit of this? So it isn't just as simple as you give someone a pill and call me in the morning. There, there is a whole service element to really helping someone. Now we understand that through a hundred years. We also are in every country in the world. We see what works and what doesn't work. And uh, we can both, I think, bring some of that knowledge but we also will see real-world evidence. I mean, the whole medical community today talks about real-world evidence as opposed to clinical evidence. The clinical evidence, we control for everything, you know. Uh, the patient is always um, compliant with therapy and um, completely supervised by the medical community. But the real world of healthcare isn't like that. And so we need to understand our medicines in the real world and, and really try to see how do we make this better and instead of just us acting in isolation, by, by actually working with those people who are on the front lines of actually helping patients, we believe that we can perhaps add something to that, but also learn something from that and adapt um, um, our, our research program. So you consider this as a research partnership or you consider this as a social responsibility you know, partnership? I would say both. Um, I, I, you know, one of the most important things for us is we invest billions over a long period of time in research and development. And you can only do that if you think that there is a healthcare system 10 years down the road that will be able to afford your medicine. And when you look at how much money is now going into these non-communicable diseases, these so-called chronic diseases, you know, we risk actually seeing um, the solvability, really, of, of healthcare systems at risk. And, and so one of the things that we can do is, if you can better get patients to go, and, and you can get them screened and into treatment early enough, you can actually do a better job of achieving health outcomes with no additional cost. And so it's, I view it as our responsibility to do what we can to make sure that those healthcare systems can stay affordable for everybody and can stay solvent. Uh, and this is, a, this is an issue everywhere in the world, you know, healthcare costs are rising faster than the gross domestic product of just about every country. And, and therefore, there has to be some rethinking of models uh, because that cannot go on uh, forever. And it's not in our interest to see that. We, it's in our interest to have stable healthcare systems and having better outcomes. And, you know, one of the phenomenon that you see is that people are increasingly saying, well, I don't want to just pay for a doctor visit or I don't want to just pay for a pill. I want to have someone actually get better. So an outcomes reimbursement system. 
And we think that will come, and, but we can't do that on our own because if you just supply the pill or the insulin, but you don't know how it gets used, how do you take any responsibility for the outcome? But people will be asking it. And so that's why we've gone into these beyond the pill strategies because we think that's where healthcare systems are going and, and we'll be obliged to, to do this. So we're trying to get ahead of the curve here. Dr. Reddy, is there any space for LLEs or the novo nodis of the world in the whole scheme of things? I think let me be very clear. The doctor is going to determine to saying who has got what product, what is good for the patient. Ultimately, the focus is on him. Whatever we are doing, uh, Sanofi or Apollo, it is not our product, what the patient needs. I think the, it's a patient-centric total solution that what we would like to create. You know, they're bringing their strengths. They're not asking us to sell their product to that uh, thing. Certainly not. So one final question, you know, uh, how do you see the growth of these clinics going? I think the need is so much, you know, if there's going to be uh, you know, a huge burden from this disease, there is that, that much need. You know, we have been telling, saying, we need to add 100,000 beds per year to meet the healthcare needs of today. But we believe that we can do much more uh, by attacking the disease before, b b attacking the burden of the disease at the early stage. This is what I think the, you know, the sugar clinics will achieve. Uh, we'll be able to, before an individual gets blocks in the coronary arteries, uh, maybe we will be able to help him, not maybe, we will certainly help him uh, with a little cooperation and with, uh, with use, giving them that message saying, hey, Take those tips what they have given, it's good for you. And my last question to Christopher, I hope that you have you are aware of the Make in India statement made by our Prime Minister. Uh, do you have any plans to you know, make an uh, announcement which would really go well with uh, the you know, Minister's uh, PM solution? Uh, we make a lot in India. In fact, we make everything we sell in India pretty much in India. And in fact, we actually already export from India in addition to that. Um, the Shanta Biotechnology Facility is, is now back up and running. We'll have a vaccine on the market in India, but that will also be a major source of export. So yes, uh, uh, we welcome the Prime Minister's uh, uh, encouragement for uh, direct investment, which uh, Sanofi has done for over 60 years. And uh, we, we, uh, we believe in the statement, make it in India, because that's what we're doing. Thank you. Sir. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.